Hannah Lore was on her first attempt to Mount Everest with her husband, Gerard Schmatz, in 1979. They were successful in climbing Mount Everest with other team members. After a perilous ascent, something went wrong. But how did it all happen? How did the success of reaching Mount Everest turned into a fatal experience for Hanalore and one of her team members. Hanalore and her husband have been planning to climb Mount Everest ever since they took this passion as a career for them. To be strong enough to face the harsh and wild conditions of Mount Everest, they both went on climbing many mountains each year. Over time, the mountains they climbed grew taller. After successfully ascending Lhotse, the fourth highest mountain in the world, they decided to apply for permission to climb Everest. In June 1977, they received the thrilling news that their wish to climb Everest had been granted permission. Once they got the permission, they started preparing for it. Hanalore was in charge of making sure that everything that was required to climb Mount Everest was available. She placed an order and had her climbing gear shipped from Europe to Nepal so she could climb Mount Everest. Hanalore meticulously managed the technical and logistical parts of their Everest trek, and her husband praised her for her amazing ability to plan and procure expedition supplies. In the 1970s, it was difficult to find good climbing equipment in Kathmandu, so it took them a lot of time to manage all the things required. And then finally, in October 1979, Hanalore, accompanied by her husband, started off their journey. They also had some Sherpa to guide them, Nick Banks, Ray Janay, Tillman Fishback, Gunter Feitz, Herman Warth, and Hans von Connell. And there was an experienced mountain guide known as Ray Janay, who was also part of this mission. He too became the victim of the brutal play of destiny and ended up losing his life in the vastness of Mount Everest. The Swabian Everest expedition of 1979 included eight experienced climbers and five Sherpas. This expedition was held under the supervision of Dr. Gerard Schmatz, who also happened to be the oldest of them all. He carried the title of being the oldest climber to ascend to Mount Everest. Gerard was 50 years old at that time. Janay was an expert mountain guide and the most renowned for his work. He was born in Switzerland and was raised in America. Janay was mostly known by his nickname. He met Honolore and Gerard in 1978 while climbing Mount McKinley. He was working as a mountain guide there and was the first guide on North America's highest mountain. The weather conditions were bad from the very start, as the Ministry of Tourism in Nepal didn't allow them to start their expedition before the 10th of August. They were not supposed to establish a base before early September, but after long meetings and negotiations, the Ministry permitted them to start their long march, which would take those 20 days to complete. They set off for Kathmandu in late July. The group of these climbers and Sherpas, including the brave and passionate Hanalore, hiked at an altitude of about 24,606 feet above the ground level. This level of altitude is also known as a yellow hand. The ice conditions at that time were miserable, but even after all the hurdles, they were able to set their first camp on September 4th at approximately 5,900 meters above the ice. To set up Camp 2, they face a lot of vertical walls. The camp was at a level of 6,300 meters. This was the 7th of September. Once they were able to descend Camp 2, they went on to Camp 3, which was pitched approximately 7,200 meters on the Lhotse Wall on the 12th of September. To get to the South Cold Camp, they had to cross a dangerous Geneva Spur. Lhotse and Everest are connected by a sharp-edged ridge that is situated at a height of 26,200 feet, 7,985 meters. On September 24th, 1979, the group decided to establish their last high camp close to the South Coal. South Coal was always seen as a destination by Hanalore, as told by her husband Gerard. As per him, Hanalore was in a perfect physical state to summit Mount Everest. However, the crew was forced to retreat to Camp 3 due to an unexpected multi-day snowfall. Unfazed, they made another attempt to get to the South Coal, dividing into two sizable groups this time. They decided to go in groups so they could ascend the mountain fast. While her husband Gerard led one group, 
Hanalor Schmatz joined it along with Janae and two Sherpas, and other climbers were the second group. On the 24th of September, the climate seemed to be fine, and they decided to climb again. After almost three days, Gerard's team was the first one to arrive at the South Pole, and they set up their camp. Their group reached a peak on the 1st of October. For the squad, getting to the South Pole was a big accomplishment. They were nearing the end of their ascent of Everest, moving in three-person groups through the arid alpine terrain. Their team decided to summit early in the morning as they started preparing for the summit by 3 o'clock, and at around 6 a.m., they were ready to leave. At around 12 o'clock, Gerard and the team were successful in reaching the south of Mount Everest. They celebrated their success and were overjoyed. Gerard Smots made a name for himself in climbing history at the age of 50. He became the oldest person in history to stand atop the world's tallest peak. Gerard was the first person to reach Everest's top. Thus, he was familiar with the conditions at Everest now. After an hour of rest, they decided to descend. The snow was too soft to reach reasonably stable levels. It was too deep to find ice for crampons due to the steepness and particularly bad snow conditions. He was well aware that it was lethal and that everyone attempting to climb Everest now would perish. The Hillary spot was a crucial stage as it was deadly. At around 7 p.m., they were successful in descending to the South Coal. The second group, Honolor and the others, reached the South Coal in the late afternoon. They congratulated the other team on their successful summit and intended to carry on their mission in the early morning the next day. Honolor and the others were informed by Gerard and his co-workers about the hazardous snow and ice conditions. They, therefore, suggested that they reconsider their ascent. On the other side, Hanelor's resolve was unwavering. Her husband referred to her as indignant, steadfast in her ambition to climb the formidable Everest. Hanelor was determined to complete her forever dream to climb Everest, and at this stage, where her husband had just summited Mount Everest, she wanted the same, and she aimed to celebrate her success with him. The group began their ascent from South Cole around 5 o'clock the next morning. Gerard began his descent to Camp 3 shortly after. The weather was rapidly deteriorating, and he was terrified. Honolor was successful in summiting Everest at around 6 o'clock in the evening. Gerard learned from the group's walkie-talkies that Honolor and her team had reached the peak of Everest about 6 o'clock that evening. After they were successful in their ascent, the team, along with Janae, decided to not rest and descend the same day. As Hanalor's group descended from the summit, the weather deteriorated. It was difficult to move ahead in the blizzard, especially for climbers who had been on the mountains for months. The weather was getting worse with every passing minute. Since both Hanalor and Janae were mentally and physically exhausted by the months-long climbing with little rest, they opted to set up a bivouac camp in the death zone at 28,800 feet elevation, despite the advice of the group's two Sherpas. The Sherpas warned Honolor and Janae not to stay in the death zone any longer and encouraged them to continue their journey back to base camp. This decision to camp in the deadly dead zone may have been the outcome of confusion and other mental flaws associated with high elevations. Mostly the seasoned climber would recognize that descending was a better course of action and would typically heed the Sherpa's advice. But as if destiny was not with Hanalor this time, so she ended up deciding to camp there. In the middle of the night, a severe storm hit the night, and it happened to be fatal for Janae as he passed away from hypothermia. Hanalor noticed a dead body and thought that the group should leave right away. But unfortunately, it was too late for this realization to come Honolor was almost in the last minutes of her life, exhausted and out of oxygen. Honolor sat down on the mountain and leaned against the ice bank. She asked for water from one of the Sherpas there, and in that very moment, Honolor Schmatz froze to death. Sundar Sherpa, one of the guides, stayed with her body and ultimately succumbed to frostbite and lost most of his fingers and toes. As a result of this disaster, Honolor Schmatz, at the age of 39, became the first German woman to perish on Everest's hazardous slopes. Janae's body was buried by the Sherpas on the mountain, 
and his remains are still there. But in the case of Hanalor, she was not lucky enough to get a burial like Janae. After her tragic death in 1979, Hanalor Schmott's body remained on the mountain for several years, acting as a gloomy guidepost for hikers traveling to the summit. Her eyes were wide, her hair was blowing in the breeze, and her body was sitting, leaning back against her pack. Due to the unfavorable weather, which included strong winds and low temperatures, Honolor's body became mummified and frozen in place, making recovering her remains very challenging. Honolor Schmott's name will be forever associated with a sad story of the first woman to lose her life on Mount Everest. Her spirit of adventure and unwavering determination serve as a reminder of the risks and sacrifices that come with pushing the boundaries of human achievement.